you are in the market to buy a home or simply curious about knowing what's happening in the real estate landscape. Every Sunday on this show, we share topical insights, trends and latest properties available in the market. Today, we highlight investment opportunities available on Mombasa Road. On this segment, we've got you covered with many homeowners sharing their stories. I really needed a property because then I had rented an apartment in Nairobi West at the time. Nairobi West was one of the very, very nice areas but legal and financial insight. It's important to have a lawyer in any real estate transaction because first of all, we understand the documentation. We understand any loopholes that will, can be there. The accessory spot, it's all about new ways to design your home with a pop of color. The property show begins right now. Engage with us on our social media handles. As always, there is something for everyone. Fairfield Gardens consists of 70 high-quality townhouses. The estate is set on five acres and each of the four-bedroom unit has a built-up area of 190 square meters, all with a DSQ. The project is located in Siokimau, 13 kilometers from Nairobi CBD. Accommodation features include an entrance hallway providing privacy to living spaces and a transition into the house. Spacious living and dining areas with an open plan concept allowing for ease of access to the rest of the house. The large windows and glass doors leading to the garden allows lots of natural light in the living area. A fully assembled kitchen with an island counter and kitchen hood, there is lots of storage space in the top and bottom drawers as well as a kitchen store for additional storage. Utility area with adobe sink and washing machine provision. An ensuite guest room at the lower level for privacy of the guests. A solid mahogany balustrade staircase leading to the upper level of the house. A spacious master ensuite bedroom with a walk-in closet, as well as a grand bathroom with a shower cubicle, bathtub, his and her sinks, plus more storage spaces. Spacious third and fourth bedrooms sharing a bathroom with fitted wardrobes. Other features in the development include perimeter wall with electric fencing and 24-hour manned gate for security, a borehole and municipal water supply with an additional 2,000 litre attic domestic water storage, solar water heating systems with an electric controller, two parking slots per house, street lighting and generator for communal areas, a clubhouse, a swimming pool, gymnasium, daycare and playground, community shop and a management office. Parkwood Villas are modern townhouses located on Wanainchi Road off Mombasa Road in Siokimau. These modern townhouses comprise of 94, four-bedroom units plus TSQ with open living spaces connecting to a private garden. Additionally, the detail and craftsmanship throughout includes floor-to-ceiling vibrancy with full-height aluminium windows to allow maximum natural light. Amenities include spacious dining and living room on the ground floor connecting to a private garden, spacious open plan kitchen, 
three bedrooms all en suite on the first floor. A full floor master en suite on the second floor giving a serene escape. European chrome brazier finishes in all bathrooms. Salient features include solar water heating and backup power, separate retreat area, kids playing area and private parking for two cars. This project comes with very high quality finishes. Here is what they have to offer. Katani Villas is located along Katani Road off Mombasa Road in Siokimau, approximately 20 kilometers from the CBD. Siokimau is the main stop for Nairobi on the Mombasa-Nairobi Standard Gauge Railway. The neighborhood is in close proximity to Jomo Kenyatta International Airport and can be accessed via Mombasa Road. The shopping facilities in close proximity include Gateway, Southfield and Signature Mall with restaurants as well as banking facilities. Schools in close proximity include Viraj International Academy, Katani, Zuena International Schools, as well as Al Masi School. You can seek medical attention from Aga Khan University Hospital, as well as Yokimao Health Center. For recreational purposes, Nairobi National Park is a stone throw away. Katani Villas is an ideal gated community consisting of 82 units of four and six bedroom units that cuts across all spheres of prospective homeowners with stylish architectural design for living. Accommodation features include spacious living area with large windows letting in natural light and wood flooring, adding that it factor as well as warmth. Separate spacious dining area with an open plan concept allowing for ease of access to the rest of the house. Fully fitted kitchen with an oven, hob and extractor, as well as cabinets for storage. Spacious master ensuite bedroom with a walk-in closet, as well as grand bathroom with a shower cubicle. A balcony, a guest room on the lower level, a common cloakroom for guests, utility area with adobe sink and washing machine provisions. Other features in the development include perimeter wall with electric fence and 24-hour manned gate for security, borehole and Athiview municipal water supply with an additional 2,000-litre attic domestic water storage, solar water heating systems, two parking slots per house and additional parking spaces for guests, cabra paved driveways, generator power backup for communal areas, social hall that will include a swimming pool, gymnasium and community shop. Mavoku Park is located in Siokimau, off Community Road, 20 kilometers from Nairobi CBD and 11 kilometers from Jomo Kenyatta International Airport. Mavoku Park consists of four and five bedroom machinettes, each with a plinth area of 150 square meters and 
183 square meters consecutively. Accommodation includes spacious living room and dining room, fitted kitchen with detached pantry, spacious ensuite master bedroom with walk-in closet, common bathroom with shower, family room, panoramic balcony, and Dolby area with provisions for washing machine. Salient features include provision for exterior gas tank storage, carbon paved driveways, underground and overhead water tanks, boundary wall with electric fence, borehole water system, mini shopping center, solar water heater, and advanced system for cable TV and internet. Next, an ideal neighborhood with transport links, schools, financial institutions, hospitals, shopping facilities, hotels, and restaurants. Tick, tick, tick. Bandari Apartments offer the privacy of community living with high-level security. The development will comprise of three blocks of 198 three-bedroom units. The apartments come in two sizes, middle units of 168 square meters, while the corner apartments have size of 171 square meters. Accommodation features include spacious lounge come dining opening to the balcony, Open plan kitchen fitted with MDF high and low level cabinets and granite worktop, pantry, laundry area, visitors cloakroom, all bedrooms are en suite and fitted with MDF wardrobes, en suite domestic staff quarter. Salient features include perimeter wall, carbon paved driveways, ample parking, two high speed lifts, common areas power backup, landscaping, children's play area, underground and overhead storage water tanks, internet and MATV connectivity, main and borehole water supply and solar water heating. Almasi Apartments are exquisite properties located 3 km from Siokimau Railway Station and Gateway Mall comprising 10 executive 3-bedroom apartments. The apartments overlook the Nairobi National Park and are less than 1 km from the Nairobi Mombasa Highway. Accommodation includes well-lit and large living and dining area leading out to a balcony open plan kitchen with granite countertops and fitted cupboards, Dolby and pantry area in balcony area alongside kitchen, three spacious bedrooms, two ensuite with large windows with built-in wardrobes and drawers and laminate wooden floors, master bedroom with walk-by dressing area. The amenities include high-speed elevator, cabro driveway, two parking bays per unit, solar water heating, borehole and underground tanks, backup generator, and 24-hour manned gate. If you have a plot and are looking to build a dream home, 
Upskill Homes is for you. We're bringing together different budget designs, a consortium including architects, engineers, financial institutions, quantity surveyors, project managers, as well as building material providers that are ready to help you jumpstart this journey. From 4 million Kenya shillings, your dream of getting a home can become a reality. I know many of our viewers are asking, who is Stash? Stash is a um, design-led architect, um, very passionate about well-designed uh, buildings and also interior architecture because what happens sometimes is you have beautifully designed buildings but the interiors are left you know, to take care of themselves. So both um, the built environment and the interior architect of the building. But I'm also a mother, I'm a mother of two. I'm a wife, so I'm a home builder, so to speak. Maybe you can share with us some of the projects you have enjoyed working on. Sure, Nancy. Um, so um, prior to being in Nairobi, um, I worked in South Africa. So I've only been in Kenya, say, three years, um, practicing as an architect with uh, my, my sister. Um, but we mainly do residential housing, um, but we've also been involved in a women's university library and other admin buildings and everything. But in South Africa, it was more luxury. Fairmont, Simbali, in Durban, I was involved in that. The company I worked for, we did a lot of hotels, a lot of luxury resorts. And that's why I think the passion for all good things comes to. You know, I will always, you know, be happy when I'm designing something that is beautiful, thought through and robust. And what's your take on upscale homes and what was your inspiration when you're working on these designs? So we were very excited when we were asked to pitch or put together a proposal for upscale. Upscale being a budget home that is designed for modern living. So when we started, um, my first um, idea was obviously it needs to be a bungalow because um, it needs to be a certain area. You can't Everything is pegged on the area in terms of finishes, in terms of materials. The main design element was um, finding something that was quaint, that was robust, that was um, thought through in terms of um, the scale of the building. Firstly, we thought of a modern house, right? Because there's not too much embellishment. We do think that we will also have um, classic houses that have more materials, cladding, that will make it slightly more expensive, but that will be something for the end user to decide. So the main factors for our first typology, the modern um, upscale house, was an open plan setting for the living room, the dining, the kitchen. Um, something that we felt will reduce on the mini walls. You don't have to have a separate kitchen, a separate dining, a separate, you know, living space. Reducing the number of walls and making it an open plan space gives it volume, gives it the airiness. This particular upscale house also has big windows. Um, and one thing I decided we should do is probably instead of having just a window on one wall, we could have a corner window which would add a very unique So factor. this is the corner window? Yes. This or is that the, one? All, or that. All, the, all the rooms in the corners have a corner window, mm -hmm. which then allow, you know, more light, more warmth into the space. And then it creates that passive ventilation that we are all, you know, seeking for. Just, you know, you go to houses where they're, you know, especially in the living areas where air doesn't move. But with windows on two different sides, you can have, you know, the ventilation that you require. So how has this journey been? We are so excited. It's actually been a labor of love. It's been, it's been a process. You know, you start with one thing, you're not too happy. And, you know, we've carried through and pushed what we can, mm -hmm. given the budget. Mm -hmm. um, so we are very excited to be involved. And we're looking forward to how it will pan out and how it will look and how people receive it. But so far, I think the very response good. has been very good. Yes. Yeah. How sustainable is this product? Mm -hmm. And how unique would you say that it stands out from so many other products in the market? OK, so Nancy, this upscale house that we've designed, um, it has unique selling points, first and foremost, even before we talk about sustainability. Um, it has the corner windows, which I mentioned. It has very proportionate rooms, and it has maximized on the plinth area. It is designed with a view of having 
um, outdoor spaces, breakout spaces, which you see on the clip, you know. Um, so the, the little all these, terraces, all these yes, terraces. the little terraces, which small as they are, they are those spaces where you go to get some time out, to socialize, you know, which you don't often see in affordable housing. Um, when we move on to sustainability, um, the house will consider rainwater harvesting. We will have a water tank that's been um, allowed for in the bills, which will catch all the rainwater and will be able to be reused in the house. Solar heating, um, in this day and age, we have to have solar heating because one, we have God-given sun and who wants to pay all those ridiculous electric bills? So uh, uh, solar heating is, uh, is a big one. Um, uh, we've, we've also thought through the materials. It's going to be a robust um, stone house. How we finish it, it'll depend uh, house to house, but um, the thermal mass you get from you know, stone housing allows for the heat that is you know, received in the day to stay in the house. You know, it's not a Mabati house. So it'll be a house that keeps warm throughout the night, you know, especially if you're going to places where that get very hot in the day and very cold at night. Kitengela, exactly, exactly, exactly. So we've thought about that. Um, once we get on the ground, um, depending on where your plot is, we will be very keen to orientate the house on the east-west axis so that um, most of your windows, the north and south side of the, of the house, can get most light and most warmth. That you will save you a lot. You won't have to keep turning on light because it's too dark. You will feel the light come in and you will feel comfortable. It will be warm, it will be embracing throughout the day. One of the things that we've noticed since we launched this product mm -hmm. is uh, a lot of inquiries are within the Nairobi bedrooms. Yes. So we have inquiries from Limoro, we have inquiries from Kitengela, That's we right. have inquiries from Rongai. These plots are, some of them are relatively small, mm -hmm. they are an eighth. Mm -hmm. What do you have in mind? How will you give me uh, a house in Rongai? We don't have sewer line, mm -hmm. we don't have water, we don't have electricity. I, know. I mean, will you give me a fence? Will you give me a gate? That's How will right. you turn it into a home? So we are very, very cognizant of the fact that when you buy a home or when you want to build a home, it has to come complete. You know, the last thing you want is to be told for this amount of money, you'll have a home and discover you have no gate, you have no fence. So the upscale home will come with a razor wire fence. It will have some sort of gate. So at least you'll have a boundary. Um, how you landscape it is up to you. Um, we will have, if there's no sewer line, we will um, have allowed for a septic tank or a biodigester or something to collect the waste. Um, there will be a water tank provided that is in the provisions for the house. Um, so in all in all, you know, everything is sort of thought through. There'll be at least two parking bays, you know, for the user because we expect people will be driving to and back from home. Um, and there'll be enough garden space, you know, which will we've allowed for some sort of landscaping, just basic landscaping. So in terms of security, in terms of water and electricity, you know, we, we would have provided for that. Affordability is key in this project. How do you expect to keep the costs affordable from the onset, given that this falls under affordable housing brackets? Mm -hmm. Thanks, Nancy. So, um, right from the start, because the brief was an affordable house, um, the first thing we had to make sure was the area was not too big. So we capped the plinth area to 130 square meters, which is enough for a three-bedroom house. It, you know, depending on how you lay out the rooms, you can get enough space in the bedrooms vis-a-vis, -vis, you know, the, the lounges and the kitchen. So the floor area is, is, is really key, because the bigger it becomes, the more expensive it gets, obviously. And then um, we purposed to choose locally sourced materials, things that, uh, you know, stone um, in the area where you'll be, if we can get good quality, like building blocks. Um, we've also um, intended on just using materials that are not too high end, but how you put them together will allow the building to read in a certain way. Things like um, stone cladding, we've minimized. Um, in the image for the three bedroom house. We've only put it where we've got the fireplace, you know? Mm -hmm. So when the embellishment part of architecture, we're not going to load on. So in terms of materials, we'll be very, very specific what we actually finish the house with. 
not that we'll cut on quality but we will make sure the quality and the cost you know mm -hmm. right together is this product for single units only mm -hmm. or if somebody who wants to do a project can come and have a chat with you that's a good question so no um we are designing for the single dweller or we're designing for a development a whole estate and obviously the larger the project, the, the, the better the cost, as in the cost will come down due to economies of scale. So that is how it will even you know, spring to more affordability, so to speak. So across the board, we will cater for one person, one building, one client, or a group of people who want to put you know, a development together. Wow, yes. Asante Sana. Thank we are you. so excited and, and I'm sure that uh, you'll give us very, very unique and high quality products. Absolutely. Spot on new ways to design your home with a pop of color. The things that you take in consideration when you're choosing furniture, first of all, you have to check the interaction between the architecture and what you're going to bring in. The colors as well will guide you uh, in terms of what furniture you're going to place and just the spirit of that place. There's always that spirit of the place. When you walk in there, what mood does it give you? After you've selected a theme, now you go into selecting the, the type of furniture that go with that theme. You will always check the locality of that house if it's an urban setting, if it's a loft maybe, or if it's a country house, or a, a coastal house. All those have uh, different ways in which you can design to bring out that spirit of that place. You're going to select furniture that marry again with the colors of the existing walls, or maybe if there are curtains, what kind of curtains do you want? You have to have like a, a flow in the space. You don't want to just uh, place things that don't go well with each other. You also have to look at the textures that you're bringing there. You want to bring contrast, the element of contrast. For example, you can do contrast in very many ways. You can use color as a contrast. Also, you can contrast the space using different shapes. Like, for example, you can break a monotony of a certain setup by introducing a round table. Again, in the space, you want to have like that predominant object, the one that is um, above everything else. And what is that? It could be an accent chair, it could be a painting, it could be an accessory. So you take into consideration all that. There's a lot that goes into designing of a space and uh, one of them is the inspiration that you have. For example, this piece, Masala. The word Masala comes from the sunset of the southern Mediterranean and what you have at that sunset is the, like you can be inspired by the colors of that sunset, which in this case, that is what inspired us. Uh, as you can see, you have the burgundy color, and that is usually very visible during the sunset. And then, of course, the dark brown to depict the color of the earth at that time. So I'll proceed to show you a piece that is also from the Masala collection. Again, it's the continuation of the same style and the same inspiration. So you have the warm colors of the sunset and the dark brown of the earth. So here we have the Bristol sofa set. As you can see, it is very stylish, elegant. It's very noble as well. It gives you that feel of 
royalty and it makes a statement. It's bulky, it works very well in uh, big spaces as well as uh, small spaces. The fabric that we've used is not very, very shouting in terms of the colors. The fabric itself is woven fabric. This one is very soft and smooth and it gives you those uh, clean curves in terms of the stitching and everything else. Now this sofa is very very comfortable and as you can see the ergonomics are just right and this is what you want for your space. The loft. As the name suggests, it is a very tiny space and as you can see this is a very functional sofa and picking up from what we had discussed earlier on, the use of neutral colors bringing out the airiness of that room. As you can see it is lifted up, it has some long legs. That is just to give you that airiness in that room so that you, it doesn't feel too bulky. Now for this sofa, it converts into a sofa bed. That is the main function. And again, it fits into small spaces. For small spaces, you need very subtle colors, but for it not to be very monotonous, we use like a pop of colors. You can use a blue, you can use yellow, you can use any color that just pops and doesn't compete with the rest of the space. For anyone who's looking to revamp or furnish their houses, this is my advice to you. First, you need to work with a budget. Without a budget, you won't be able to know what kind of uh, furniture you want to get. Also, you need to come up with a theme. Let the theme be about your personality because you're the end user. We want to feel your personality when we come into your space. be right back with more investment opportunities along Mombasa Road and much, much more after this short break. Because of the work that I've gotten into. When I left school, uh, I was a banker for quite a number of years. To mess up divide into one eight, one break. eight. Don't go away. Welcome back. You're watching The Property Show. How does one prepare before buying a home? What questions should one ask? And what bumps should one anticipate along the way? Next, expert legal and financial insights. It's important to have a lawyer in any real estate transaction because first of all, we understand the documentation. We understand any loopholes that will, can be there. We guide you on how to pay, when to pay, how to pay, what you need to do. We also check on the titles, whether they are sound titles, what you're buying is good. What we also do is we go a step further. We've got clients who are in the diaspora who cannot come. So when they're buying houses or buying apartments, we actually are the ones who go in, check the apartments. So I've actually developed a liking also for construction and real estate because of the work that I've gotten into. So you, you develop an eye for certain things in construction, just understanding whether a project is good or not because of the kind of um, team that you see on the ground, the materials that are being used. So you walk around and you check, what is the finish like? What are they doing? So th I, I appreciate that very much. As a developer, I think the most important thing is make sure that um, the, the land that you want to develop on, you've got everything in order. Get all your regulations, all your statutory requirements are there. Um, get all your consents, your licenses, anything that touches on that land. For whatever you want to do, make sure you get them before you start. Because it would be really foolhardy for you to commence a construction or a project without getting your paperwork in order. Basically aligning your ducks, putting your ducks in a row. Um, as a purchaser, um, I would say engage a lawyer because then they're able to see, to check for you the paperwork. Does the developer have good title for you to pass on? Because you can only pass on a good title, otherwise you, you won't be able to 
benefit from your investment. So we guide you through that process. Yeah, We've also advised clients not to purchase certain uh, projects because we felt that you know what they were getting into would not benefit them. Because you see again, um, and I say this with all due respect to developers, not all developers think about the future of the purchaser. It's just a quick return for them. Many apartment uh, developments nowadays, I, I think you've seen them all over Kilalesha, Kilimani, all the way to Athi River, people construct apartments, put up swimming pools, put up gymnasiums. But four or five years down the line, you get there, the gym equipment is not working, the pool is not functioning. Why? Because thought wasn't put into it. Who is managing these things? So those are the kind of questions we ask. What is the future plan for the sustenance of this development according to what you were engaging in from the commencement? When I became a mother, the one thing that I decided to do was not to take work home at all. So all my work I completed in the office. If I didn't finish it that day, I wouldn't take it home, but I would come and work on it the next day. So I clearly demarcated my lines in terms of my work and my home life. I don't discuss work when I leave the office. In fact, I switch off my mind. <laughs> so that's one of the things that would help any mother. Just once you shut the door of your office, change gears, now you're a mom, now you're a wife, you're a grandmother, you're a sister. So leave everything behind. But when you're in the office, focus on the office. Another home ownership story. I was a banker. When I left school, I was a banker for quite a number of years. I worked for Commercial Bank of Africa for a good number of years. and. Um, until I retired, all through, I didn't change banks. I just stayed with one bank. And I was um, in CBA for close to 30 years. And um, it got to a point where I felt I needed to just change um, part of my life and part of the way I was doing things. So I left CBA and I went to, other, to do other things. Property ownership started while I was in the bank. Initially, I was still very young then. I didn't think much about um, the property. But when I became a mother, it dawned on me that I now needed to put myself together and start um, thinking about owning a property where I can bring up my child. And um, at that time, my dream house was in Nairobi South Sea. And I always dreamt about that house. It was called, um, and it is still called, the Villa Rose. And every time I passed by South Sea, South sea was then a very sleepy little town. There weren't many people. It was so quiet. It was nothing like uh, Nairobi West. It was not as vibrant. It was just a quiet little place, but with beautiful houses there. So I used to pass by there and I would see Villa Rose. And I would always say, one day I'll own a villa like this one. And um, around the time I was in the bank, still very young, I used to work in the loans department. I was heading the loans department and um, I used to work very closely with the credit department. And at one time, the manager credit called me and said, I know you junior officers are not supposed to get real estate loans, but look for a house and I'll approve your mortgage. And uh, he told me there are some houses coming up in Buruburu. That's the time the Buruburu properties were coming up. Maybe you could look around there and you can't believe it. I told him, I'm not going to live in Buruburu. He was shocked. One, I didn't even qualify. He was only doing me a favor. Then I'm telling him here, there's no way I'm going to move to, move to Buruburu. And he turned to his colleague and said, look at this proud beggar. She doesn't want to live in Buruburu. And sure enough, I didn't take the offer. But as time went on, I think it's, it began to dawn on me. I really needed 
a property because then I had rented an apartment in Nairobi West at the time. Nairobi West was one of the very, very nice areas in Nairobi then. So uh, with, as time went on, I thought maybe I should uh, own a house, but I still wanted a house in South Sea. Sometimes when you put your mind on something, it, it creates or it creates some opportunity. And in no time, I was just looking at my paper and I saw an estate coming up in Nairobi South Sea. And I said, wait a minute, my Villa Rose is coming up. They had a show house and I left work in the evening and went direct to Nairobi West to view the show house. I didn't even need to get inside. When I just saw the outside, I said, this is what I've been dreaming about. And then immediately, I went back to the office I went to my loans officer and I said there's an, uh, there are houses coming up in Nairobi South Sea, would, um, would you approve a loan for me? And he said uh, go to the developers and get a letter from them. So I went to them and they told me to go back to the bank, confirm that I qualify for the kind of loan they wanted at the time. So I went to them, they, I went back to the bank and I told them that they gave them a letter and I was allocated a house in South Sea. The only problem at the time, the houses started very slowly and at one point they stalled. That was about 1985, um, yes, they stalled and I almost gave up. I started looking elsewhere and uh, I kept going places and I would not like what I, I didn't like the environment, I didn't like the, the community, didn't look very friendly, but South Sea was just my dream place. So I, as I kept going around, then I, they again started, and they, this time they started building, and they built very fast. So come 1987, my house was ready. And 31st December 1987, I moved into my dream house in South Sea. The only thing I didn't do, I didn't name it Villa Rose. I was still, the villa was still not yet there. And that's, uh, that's how I became an owner of my first house in South Sea. How does one prepare before buying a home? What questions should one ask? And what bumps should one anticipate along the way? Well, on this segment we've got you covered with many homeowners sharing their stories. One of the frequently asked questions when buying property are the associated costs. These are third-party costs incurred during the transaction. The cost includes stamp duty, legal fees, valuation, insurance and processing fees if you're taking a mortgage. The cost may vary between 8 and 10% depending on where the property is located. During that process, it helps if you have some extra cash. More investment options available along Mombasa Road. Savannah Park Rongai is located in the outskirts of Ongata Rongai town, which is one of the satellite towns 10 kilometers northwest of Nairobi city. The property is near the road linking Ongata Rongai, Nazarene University and the new SGR station. The road from the SGR to Savannah Park is graded to Maram standard and is just a five minute drive to the entrance gate. Savannah Park Rongai has 200 plots located one kilometer from the new Rongai Kisarian SGR railway station and three kilometers from Nazarene University. 
The plots are suitable for residential homes due to the close proximity to the famous Rimpa Conservancy. They also offer a beautiful view of Gong Hills. The plots are fully serviced with piped water, a borehole and electricity on site. Each individual plot is fenced after payment is complete. Savannah Park Rongai also has 4G coverage. The developer of Savannah Park had planted eucalyptus trees which have now matured. The site and service land scheme also has a plan of three and four bedroom missionettes with a team of professionals to help jumpstart your home ownership journey. This comes at a separate fee. Anchor Gardens Kitengela responds to the growing desire to live in a peaceful, beautiful and secure gated community with modern amenities. This 10-acre piece of land offers 50 by 100 acre service plots with a perimeter wall already in place. Anchor Gardens offer an opportunity to build your home in a controlled development while offering you in-house consultancy on construction. Located 200 meters from the Nairobi Namanga Highway, Anchor Gardens is 4 kilometers from Kitengela Town. Our next stop is another site and service land scheme in Kitengela. Let's have a look. Plots, Kitengela, Kisinya, Embakasi, Utawala, and Abi River. Plots zetu zote to me subdivide into one eighth, one eighth, one eighth. Then after subdividing, we transfer the mother title to individual title deed. The reason why to not transfer our titles ni kwa sababu kuna watu anataka kununua plots, yeah? na wanataka either to be financed, either from the bank from your circle and the rest. So once you may identify our plot, we'll give you the title of that individual plot umechagua. This is an diaspora scheme, about six acres, subdivided to 51 plots. The Tani Diaspora Estate is a gated community located 500 meters off Nairobi Namanga Highway, just a few kilometers from the ostrich farm. The neighborhood is comprised of many new controlled housing schemes. The plot is in the locality of KCA University, KAG University with close proximity to Sukas Hospital and Galaxy Hospital. It is ideal for student housing. The plots have proximity to an all-weather road, piped water and electricity. Royal Gates is a gated community located in Acacia, 4 kilometers from Kitangela town. This development consists of 78 four-bedroom detached townhouses. Amenities include a spacious lounge with a separate dining area, modern kitchen fitted with quality appliances and ample storage space, master ensuite bedroom with inbuilt wardrobes and a bathtub, an ensuite guest bedroom, two additional bedrooms with a common bathroom, internet-ready houses, as well as a centralized TV port. Other features include detached ensuite DSQ with ample wash area, two parking slots per house, a swimming pool, a fully equipped gym, boho and wastewater recycling system, private gardens, children's playground, CCTV cameras, electric fence and perimeter walls for security, street lighting, solar power and carbro paved driveway. 
The expected completion date of the second phase is expected to be complete by March 2021. Thank you for watching The Property Show. Let's continue engaging on our social media handles. Until next week. As always, there is something for everyone. Kwa Henry.